Some of my most prominent childhood memories were my daily commute to and from my primary school. Every morning, I always loved staring out of the window and observed the, exci the ex exciting city life around me. While passing by different neighborhoods in the city of Shenzhen, a mega city in southern China of 12 million souls. Until one morning, I noticed a gray haze hanging over the sky, blocking my favorite skylines. I was baffled by this strange weather condition, but little did I know that it was pointing towards a much bigger environmental problem. From that day on, everything seemed different. Gradually, nestled under the shadow of the skyscrapers were no longer colorful storefronts with vivid billboards. They were only geometric shapes shrouded by a brown coat of smog. The playgrounds that was once filled with laughter is now deserted. And on the sidewalk, I can, see, I can see less and less people walking or exercising. At one point, the smog got so bad that even the skyscrapers disappeared. The distinct scenery I once loved so much vanished into a gray abyss. And I wondered what I can do to help. So approaching high school, I had the opportunity to come study in the US. With my expanded knowledge in science and new resources I found valuable, I knew I had to do something. So I started with some basic research on teaching myself what is air pollution. And soon, I found that air pollution is one of the silent killers that lurks all around us. Every day, fossil fuel plants, coal plants are emitting harmful pollutants into the air, poisoning our environment with mercury, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, and many other chemicals. According to World Health Organization, air pollution is one of the deadliest environmental crises of our time. In fact, air pollution causes 36% of deaths from lung cancer, 34% of deaths from stroke, and 27% of deaths from heart diseases. And together, one in eight people who died last year died because of air pollution. And the root cause of all of this is still the fossil fuel industry that's so prevalent in our energy market today. So I wanted to figure out what uniquely I can do. After engaging with local officials back home and reading articles of scientists, scientists all across the world, I realized there are two important layers to this complex and systematic crisis. First is policy layer. What are the governments deciding? What are international treaties talking about that's affecting the quality of our air? And second is technology layer. What are the scientists working on to improve the protection technology or provide alternative energy? To figure out what to focus on, I thought hard about what I'm good at. I thought about my passion for science and my love for engineering and design. And I thought about the people who I know personally who died from air pollution. I thought my friend, my friend Ava, who was 24 years old at the time, but died from a stroke in 2015. Caused by the air pollution, she has endured and suffered for most of her life. And that moment, it became clear to me that I wanted to use science and technology to help at least alleviate the crisis, even just for a little bit. As a student researcher, I didn't have time to wait for policy changes or big polluters to self-correct their business models. So after weeks and weeks of researching, I realized that ineffective filtering material was a key reason that led to so many health risks. You see, at the time, the material and filters people were using and wearing were often materials that are designed for bacteria, not air pollutants. So as, as a result, people were still breathing those pollution without their realization. So I knew the power was within a new design. All I needed to know is how to turn this idea into a reality. Being the high school student at the time, even with my science knowledge, I knew I had to reach for more help. I didn't know anyone at the time, but I managed to cold email over 100 professors across the world who are doing great research in the nanotechnology space. Most of them never replied, a uh, few of them did, and two ultimately became my mentors. They helped me to set up my initial research scope, and soon I started what eventually my high school friends would call it my secret underground project. So for the next two summers, I practically lived in two nanotechnology labs, collaborating with other researchers, redesigning materials, and testing prototypes. Soon I helped redesign a better material without compromising its effectiveness. Soon enough, we realized that those materials are better and thinner 
because it doesn't, it doesn't cause any harmful particulates to pass through them. And the mentors have been reaching on and, and helping me, help me with, with doing more testing and more independent field tests. And soon enough, we completed real-life testing that spent over 60 days covering all the major cities in southern China. The material worked, but equally importantly, it was, cheap, it was cheap to manufacture and therefore more economically accessible to everyone. The lowering cost not only gave me the advantages necessary to set up a social enterprise, but also allowed us to manufacture tens of thousands of filters and masks cheaply and reliably, which led us to partner with even larger clean tech companies in the US and in Asia, and together we've given out more than 80,000 masks for free to the most vulnerable communities in China, India, and later during the US, during the fire. Reflecting back on this journey, there have definitely been more downs than ups. There have been frustrating nights after I failed to pitch my ideas to others, and uh, there have been countless emergency calls while I tried to correct mistakes in the manufacturing process or in the lab. It's hard for someone our age to start something real, but my point is, it is not impossible. And now I'd like to share with you a few perspectives I gained over the years if you also would like to start something or have a problem you want to tackle. First is, discover your ideas based on your own unique perspectives and understanding about the world. See, growing up in China made me the victim of air pollution, but also made me the biggest champion of clean energy and protection technology. Notice your perspective and turn them into advantages. Second, always on the look for the best people. Those can be investors, mentors, or even friends who will provide you with long-term depth and breadth of support. Those are the people who will allow you to see hope within yourself, even in the darkest time. Many people my age or younger are too afraid to ask for what they want. But in fact, being young means more people are actually more willing to help you and give you a feedback. The challenging search for mentors made me realize that those rejections are purely a pre-requirement for success. And the benefits of building and retaining those relationships far away the setbacks. Third, it's never too early. It doesn't matter if you're a college professor, if you're a college student or middle schooler, you have the power to make a difference. Don't make your experience an excuse. Instead, leverage your energy and frugalness. Because I didn't choose to wait and instead choose to act, the technology I helped develop is now protecting people, benefiting the city I commuted to and from every day in middle school. When I choose to, when I choose to act, it means it means those technology are now helping people with, with, push, with pushing the boundaries and letting go those fears, you, can, you are able to make a difference. Now with these three values, I believe you will find a purpose in whatever you do. It doesn't matter if you want to call your congressman today or start a research project. All you need to do is to tell yourself, why not me, why not act right now? In a world where the main energy source is still dominated by fossil fuel, we don't have time but to act. Now, I'd like to make an ask for all of you. Let's act together. Let's be entrepreneurial together to solve climate challenges together. There will be rejection and setbacks, but 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did do. There will never be a better time than right now. Thank you very much.